When humans arrived in America, there were a host of animals more impressive than can be seen in any wilderness in the world today. We're all familiar with the African Serengeti. Vast grasslands spotted in trees, thorny scrub and watering holes playing host to huge numbers of herbivores like elephants, rhinos and giraffes and an impressive clade of predators like lions, cheetahs and hyenas. What many people don't know is that each continent had its own Serengeti equivalent. We're going to look at what the American Serengeti was, the best examples that can still be seen today and what it could look like in the future when more land has been rewilded. Just 13,000 years ago, when the Clovis people ruled North America, there were many large animals. Four huge elephant relatives, the American Mastodon, Colombian mammoths, which were far bigger than any land animal alive today, the crazy looking Gomphoth here, and also the woolly mammoth who lived in the colder regions in the north. At least two species of bison, including the longhorned bison, which is thought to be the largest bovine that ever lived, and bison antiquus, the larger ancestor of modern American bison. American wild horses, pronghorn antelope, the second fastest land animal alive today, camelops, which is an extinct camel, even taller than today's camels, Hemiochenia, a llama relative, four huge species of ground sloth, the smallest being the size of a black bear and the largest weighing 1.5 tons or 3,300 pounds. For size comparison, that's heavier than any living bison. There was a giant beaver weighing up to 125 kg or 280 pounds. The deer species of America, moose, elk and white-tailed deer, lived alongside this amazing group of animals. The herbivores were hunted by an even more impressive group of predators. Giant shark-faced bears, one of the largest bears that ever lived, stood up to 3 meters or 10 feet on its hind legs. Brown bears, often called grizzly bears in America, and black bears, competed alongside it and likely would have fleed at the sight of their larger cousin. The three American wolf species alive today competed with their bigger relative, the dire wolf. There were a host of big cats, including American lions, thought to be the largest cat that ever lived. The saber-toothed cat, Smilodon fatalis, Homotherium, a distant cousin of Smilodon, which was about the size of modern-day lions, American cheetahs, which are said to be the reason pronghorns evolved to be so fast. There were jaguars in many of the southern states, and of course mountain lions, also known as cougars, were present. Despite many of these animals being lost to America, there are still some beautiful Serengeti-like grassland prairies in the US. Yellowstone National Park is home to bison, elk, moose, mountain goats, white-tailed deer, mule deer and pronghorn, being followed by predators including brown bears, black bears, grey wolves and mountain lions. Theodore Roosevelt National Park is home to the full range of large herbivores, including mustangs, which themselves aren't native to USA, but have been in America for 500 years now and fill the ecological niche left vacant by the extinct American wild horse. Unfortunately, none of the four large American predators are present in the park. Cougars can sometimes be seen, but wolves and the two bear species have yet to be reintroduced. The American Prairie Foundation have been buying vast tracts of land, starting in Montana and restoring its natural beauty by removing livestock where possible and introducing herds of bison. They welcome all Native American animals onto the land in their efforts to restore the American prairie, so the reserve could end up being the most impressive wilderness in the country in years to come. Many of the animals that were lost to America would have been keystone species who drove the ecosystem in which they lived. Most went extinct between 13,000 and 9,000 years ago. Like most large-scale extinctions, there were multiple causes. The climate was cooling drastically, which put a lot of pressure on the animals, but most of those species had been through many different shifts in climates across the millennia in which they existed. This time though, they had to deal with something different. A new predator, more intelligent than any they'd ever met. Humans. Humans hunted the vast majority of herbivores on the prairie, including the huge Colombian mammoths, hunting clueless prey and outcompeting the other predators while they were struggling to adapt to a changing climate proved too much. Many ecologists, most famously Josh Donlan, have proposed rewilding huge areas in America by introducing animals from other countries to fill the roles left vacant by their extinct American relatives and fully restore the biodiversity of USA. So what if America were to allow large areas to be rewilded? Of course, we could see America start with an area host to the full array of wildlife present in North America. Moose and elk, the two largest deer species in the world today, and their smaller cousins, the mule deer and white-tailed deer. 
bison, pronghorn and mustangs, all being preyed upon by black bears, brown bears, wolves and mountain lions, along with middle-sized predators like bald eagles, golden eagles, coyotes, badgers and bobcats. But Donlan proposed going further. He suggested reintroducing Asian and African elephants as proxies for their four extinct American relatives. They'd likely struggle in the colder areas of USA, but could do well in the southern half if given the space. He wanted Bactrian and Dromedary camels to replace Camelops. Bactrian camels in particular do well in both freezing cold and searing heat, as the deserts they come from go to negative temperatures in the night and extreme heat in the day. He suggested welcoming Mustangs as a native species and removing the invasive tag they've often been given. This next one wasn't suggested by Donlan, but Guanacos, the wild ancestor of the llama, could fill the role of their extinct American cousin, the Hemiochenia. Donlan even suggested bringing in big cats. He wanted cheetahs to replace the lost American cheetah and restore the evolutionary pattern of the pronghorn once again. He wanted lions to take the place of the American lion and indeed the other big cats lost to America, giving bison, moose and maybe even bears something to worry about. Some of the extinct animals don't really have an appropriate proxy alive today. The closest relative of the giant short-faced bear is the spectacled bear of South America, but ecologically the brown bear and black bear, which are already in USA, are much more similar. The giant beaver is roughly three times the size of today's beaver, but its little cousin will have to carry the flag. Giant ground sloths are completely different from their distant cousins we see living in trees today, so we'll have to hope other large herbivores can step in and fill their niche. Of course America is a long way away from being able to introduce these animals, and nothing should be rushed, everything should be trialed slowly. But can you imagine an American wilderness spanning as far as the eye can see, where a cheetah pursues a pronghorn, both running at over 60 miles an hour, where a camel defends her calf from a pack of wolves, or a bear stealing a bison carcass from a pride of lions. I'd love to make more videos about the Serengeti equivalents found in other countries and continents, so let me know what area you'd like to see next in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel to help it grow and check out this video I made detailing the European Serengeti. Thanks for watching.